Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante and we're live at VMworld 2011. I'm with wikibon.org and I am here with my new co-host, Steve Keniston. Hey Dave. Steve, I feel like we're back doing running data. No kidding, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on and, uh, my pleasure. and setting this up. So we have these spotlights this year, as you know, Steve, um, and spotlights are designed to be in-depth segments um, to really go deep, help customers understand a particular topic, how they can most take advantage of it, what some of the use cases are, what some of the proof points are. These are sponsored segments. Segments IBM is sponsoring the uh, storage optimization segment. And um, so basically the way that we set these up is we have an initial overview of the marketplace and then two segments with subject matter experts and then we have an independent panel on there. So um, thanks for coming on, I appreciate it. My pleasure. So, Let's start with sort of what's going on in, in the marketplace and we'll just sort of banter back and forth. So on this slide, I just put up some of the big, big picture trends. You've got cloud, you've got big data, and they're really accelerating the, the data tsunami. I mean, everybody's seen the IDC data, the up and to the right charts, which I know you love. <laughs> Hate the up and to the right <laughs> charts, but it, but it is true, right? People are trying to figure out how do I get more data online so that I have access to it and that accessibility is slowly moving from the backup arena to just have, just to be able to get to it, to be able to now, how can I analyze it? Which I think is what really spawned this whole big data movement. Yeah, now, um, the, the second point I have on here is that optimization you know, is obviously going to lower cost. And now a lot of people think that, well, you, you lower cost, you, you, you cut the cost per gigabyte. A lot of the sales mentality is I'm going to sell less gigabytes. Yeah, and right. I think uh, I think we've proven time and time again that that just doesn't happen, right? right what's I mean, ha what happens? Yeah, I mean, when 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 we introduced deduplication, uh, obviously when I was at Abamar, right? Now all of a sudden the backup world started to grow because now not only could I deduplicate it and put it on primary disk, I now had an opportunity to replicate it, and because I wanted it online, I could efficiently get it to another location. I effectively created my disaster recovery plan, and I had the data in another location. Same thing happened in WAN optimization, same thing happened, I could now put compressed data on tape, let's put more data on tape, right? So, optimization is becoming table stakes is the point on this slide, um, but it continues to be hampered by overheads. Um, you, you have a number of companies who are you know, including uh, uh, optimization capabilities, uh, let's say you know, dedupe or compression in the system, which is, I've always said, where it belongs. Absolutely. But customers have to be careful. There's always a but, you know, try it. You know, see how it performs. And so, I know one of the areas that you, you, you have emphasized is, is performance, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah, I think there's always a trade-off between, you know, when computer science, whenever you do anything, there's a trade-off between optimization, whether it be chip optimization, storage optimization, as w and then on the other side, efficiency, right? How fast or how quickly can I get it done? I think the key thing to always remember, and I think it's one of the core values of when we were developing the real-time compression technology was, you need to always make sure that customers buy storage for two very key reasons, performance and availability, right? And you got to make sure that you, you maintain those things because customers don't want to see anything different. So, um, this slide here that we have up talks about um, how organizations are drowning in data. I like it better than the up and to the right slide. It's exactly. a conceptual slide, but it basically says, okay, com computing power is going crazy. You've got data going like nuts. But the amount of data that's actually filtered, that, that algorithms you know, allow us to actually make sense out of it is, is limited. And that gap between the amount of filtered data and the amount of data that we have is this information gap that, that causes problems for organizations, right? W what happens there? I think ultimately, right, what you want to try to do is close the gap, but because we talked about data is growing so fast, and the tools that we have to be able to access that information and understand that information, is, is it's, it's more and more difficult to, to, to be able to do that. So, you know, this slide actually really talks to the fact that the more data you have and the ability that you're actually able to have to be able to make more mistakes, making a mistake, I always even said this in business, I don't mind failing at, at a company, right, as long as I learn from that failure. If I can learn from the information that I have and make that, make that failure, I now know something something about the data that is untrue, which helps me know that some other thing must be true, right? So it's, it's the importance of being able to access all of that content, and that gap there, the, the tools that are available to be able to get, get to the information, however it's stored, are really, is really becomes the key. And that leads to data value. The more, the more context you have around information, the more valuable it is. I mean, it's really a simple concept, but it's, why is it so hard for, for organizations to, to actually implement that concept? I think you, I mean, we talked a little bit before about budgets being flat within storage organizations, right? I don't have all the money that I used to be able to spend to keep everything online that I would want to keep online. 
And then I couple that with the fact that drive capacities and the fact you know that, that I can't store more in that particular footprint and couple that with the fact that I'm not going to be going through you know, again, the economic time, keeping my, my people down or whatnot, I can't go forward and uh, continue to add more resources to be able to do more work. So I'm kind of stuck in this limbo where I have these set of processes that allow me to store a certain amount of capacity locally, and I kind of grow with that as I see fit of how my data just normally grows, which doesn't help me get ahead of the curve, I just try to maintain pace, and then at the end of the day, I'm trying to protect that and back it up and do all those other ancillary things that are required with maintaining a storage environment. I never seem to get ahead of it. Now, I talked earlier about the, the overheads involved, and we've done an extensive research on Wikibon. Uh, we have a, uh, a methodology called core capacity optimization uh, uh, ratio efficiency. It's a measurement, essentially an ROI measurement, but it takes into account the the cost of overhead, the, the cycles, the CPU cycles that you have to use. Um, and, and so, we live in a world of real time, real time decision making, the real time web, everybody wants real time. Um, and so, uh, what we're seeing here is a real push toward getting those overheads down and having performance really be transparent to the users, aren't we? Absolutely, you, you can't stress enough this notion of having a real time platform. Being able to have access to information is one thing, but being able to have access to all of the information that you want in real time is just tremendous, right? If you go back up a couple of slides and you take a look at that, uh, that quote, right? Every millisecond gained in programming trading, right, applications, right, is worth $100 million a year, right? So back in the beginning we were talking about what is the value of having that information available and online to the user? Every piece of data means money. Right? So how do we how do you make your how do you make these vendor these companies right more more business efficient right that's what they want I can't spend as much money as I used to how do I spend it focused so that I'm more business efficient and you got to make technologies that drive that business efficiency so let's uh, lay out the landscape here we, uh, we're doing a panel I have a panel at SNW you're on it uh, Craig Nunez is on it uh, Jared Floyd uh, from uh, Permabit. from Permabit is on it and Larry Freeman from NetApp is NetApp, on it. Yep. So let's kind of lay out the landscape. Um, you know, let's start with NetApp. NetApp's got uh, uh, compression, they got dedupe, it's, it's built in. You got uh, Alberio, which has uh, basically an SDK, which is, it's shipping. Uh, IBM real-time compression. Um, uh, you got, I think EMC's doing some stuff, right? With, with their compression with the and compression, their deduplication, uh, correct. Uh, 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 built into the systems. Dell acquired Oak Arena, which is more of a, um, Appliance base uh, today, but dedupe an, uh, an intelligent dedupe, but as file aware, really, really for archive, yep. you know, data. So that's that's really not in that real. Of those that I've mentioned, the guys that are real time are really uh, Alberio and IBM real time compression, right? Those are the two. Correct. Right. Is that is that for, and Alberio's dedupe, IBM's obviously uh, compression. Compression. Yeah. So so that's kind of the landscape. Um, We've said on Wikibon, I don't know if you can comment, but we've said that eventually these things are going to be embedded into systems. That's really the direction that this is going. It really makes a lot of sense. Make that transparent to the users. Um, so some of the customer issues that we're looking at, the recession is still fresh in people's minds. I mean, and, and if you can optimize the storage, you can save some money. I think every customer is going to start asking, well, why isn't all my storage optimized? I are, agree. Are they asking you that? They are. Yeah. And, uh, We've got macroeconomics uncertainties. We had uh, Tom Georgians on today from NetApp. He was talking about the macro trends. There's still a lot of uncertainty. You know, I'm not saying there's going to be a double dip recession, but you know, a little pe few people are worried about that. Um, at the same time, data growth doesn't stop. Right? Even in the recession of 2008 and 2009, data growth continued at 50, 60, 70 percent. Um, so the need for optimization is greater than ever before. And and as we talked about, the world wants real time. The world needs real time. So these are some of the things that we're going to explore in this spotlight. Anything else you'd add, you know, closing thoughts? No, I think uh, I think you've you've nailed it all, right? It, it's not just even about, you know, you talk about data growth. It's it's having that data online that that customers want, right? Given the given the economics, right? How do I make my business more effective? And if I can make my business more effective by getting more out of my data, then I want to be able to do that. Well, how can I do that? if I can't actually go and add to my capacity, if I don't have the power, the cooling, the floor space, whatever it is, if I can't do that, how do I end up doing more analytics on more data? The, the answer is optimization. Somehow you have to optimize. All right, this is uh, Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org. I'm here with my colleague and co-host, uh, Steve Keniston. Uh, Steve, it was great having you back. Thank Let's you. do more of these. Uh, we got a couple more sessions. Keep it right here. 
Uh, we'll be back with the in-depth spotlight on storage optimization.